we are now welcoming our next speaker mr mohammad tahir uh, professor jo mentioned about very vividly about the 1971 uh, 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 cyclone and uh, uh, which happened in east pakistan which is now uh, bangladesh and uh, uh, mr tahir is uh, uh, you know working in these areas in terms of uh, uh, what is it monitoring and evaluation and and uh, you know how do you develop participatory approaches in evaluating various uh, interventions and focusing on gender equity uh, justice perspectives nowadays he is focusing more on the urban resilience climate resilience and has worked on uh, flooding uh, projects and uh, uh, very much uh, bangladesh continues to be very much stressed with uh, high climate risks floods and more and now we would like to hear from uh, professor uh, mr tahir directly maybe you can share your uh, story your experience and your perspectives uh, focused on how bangladesh is coping uh, and also building uh, resilience because it has uh progress quite a bit but it is still ambitious to do more so some of the areas which uh, request if you can cover include the following bangladesh yes is now advancing economically but still its resource base it has come from poverty so given these kind of resource constraints in bangladesh what have been some of the innovative and frugal solutions to deal with the flooding challenges and can you share a few examples and uh, which are the major stakeholders which are addressing Uh, uh the resilience issue in bangladesh and what are their roles then uh, what has been the role of technological and non technological innovations and interventions in this and lastly what are the lessons and experience sharing that bangladesh can give to other countries both developed and developing repeating again it has become renowned for developing resilience i remember seeing a video a uh, clip of uh, the german news with the heading of what can we learn from bangladesh so it has challenges and uh, 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 what is it perspectives on its initiatives mr tahir over to you please thank you very much dr raja for the introduction um uh, i i would like to uh, welcome all the participants uh, very good afternoon from bangladesh to everyone uh after having listened to the presentation by uh jo uh ms dr jo ritz yeah uh, uh the bangladesh presentation which is of bangladesh is also a delta like uh, netherlands uh it will it will present an interesting contrast i, I hope so i would like to share my presentation right away okay the first slides uh, uh, this is uh, i think uh, it uh, quite representative of the title uh, of the this presentation uh, where you can see uh, uh, an example of how people live with floods uh, the the outline of my presentation will it will be basically cover uh, the context of uh, flooding in bangladesh and some examples of the solutions that we have uh, uh, we have adopted and some uh, and technological perspective in relation to those and i will conclude by some learning and experience sharing next please uh, the key message as right uh, i thought uh, would be uh, useful to share with you the conclusions uh that uh, resilience building against flood disaster uh in, in the context of bangladesh is not attempting to stop it but uh trying to managing it and living with it and we consider floods or any disaster is actually has a human contribution in it and therefore it needs to the solution need also needs to be people oriented and needs to focus on people and their interaction with nature uh we need an increased focus on nature based nature based solution these days in the intervention programs uh 
And uh, the other final conclusion is that resilience building requires a strengthening of human capacity and uh, long-term solutions. Because uh, in the past, uh, often disaster responses were very short-term and very limited kind of time intervention. And there were hardly uh, any integration with the uh, mainstream development processes. So they need to be integrated with development processes. Now, uh, the key water-related uh, challenges that Bangladesh has is uh, that it is a mainly a low-lying uh, country, which uh, number of rivers, mighty major rivers flowing through the country, carrying loads of uh, sills and uh, raising the beds, the river beds, causing monsoon time when runoff uh, water uh, failed to you know, go through the, the streams. It floods the surrounding villages and uh, cities. Uh, similarly, from the south, I mean, main flooding actually comes from the north of the country. But interestingly, from the south also, we get flooding through accompanied by cyclones, tropical cyclones, which bring in salinity, saline, saline waters, uh, which render the agricultural fields uh, un unusable and uh, causes uh, suffering to people in terms of shortage of uh, drinking water for the coastal uh, uh, residents. Uh, and uh, interesting enough also that the, the during one part of this, uh, during one season, we also suffer from lack of water. The country which is uh, known for uh, plenty of uh, water is, has uh, also to suffer for interesting reasons. Uh, of a, a, a kind of a drought, which is locally known as Monka. Okay, the map I will show, and probably this will the map will clarify that if you look at uh, uh, the top north from Assam, India, a uh, major river is Brahmaputra, which enters into Bangladesh, and from the west enters the Padma River, and also from Meghalaya and Assam, there are a number of rivers which flow through Bangladesh and end up in the uh, Bay of Bengal. But along the rivers, uh, we get uh, almost every year seasonal uh, flooding and uh, which you know, disrupts livelihoods, house, habitats, human habitats, and, and all natural resources. As a result, we also see a concentration of poverty along these river banks. There are two pictures about, uh, you know, cyclone disaster this is and how people are dis displaced. Now, the, uh, in response to the problems of flooding, uh, some of the frugal solutions that uh, we have adopted in Bangladesh uh, will be explained later on. And uh, um, uh, the, the context of it. That uh, in the 1990s and uh, 80s, you know, uh, we had uh, an attempt to undertake massive flood uh, action plan, massive flood action plan, which wanted to build big infrastructure, the like of which you have just heard from uh, Mr. Joe uh, that they are introducing in the Netherlands. But for the context of Bangladesh, it was considered to be not only inappropriate, but it would probably have contributed further uh, disasters uh, in, in the country. So we have tried to, uh, you know, experts and social scientists and all have been spoken against that plan. Finally, that, that uh, attempt was stopped and we instead, we have introduced a smaller scale community base uh, capacity building, resilience building programs and projects. Uh, but these uh, pro smaller projects often had, uh, had uh, you know, shorter term duration and failed to produce uh, any sustainable results. So we undertook some relatively larger, longer term projects 
uh, which uh, uh, which 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 aim to reduce vulnerability of the coastal people as well as flood flood uh, prone areas in the country. Uh, so these were uh, both in urban and uh, rural areas. These were implemented both in urban and rural areas. And in, there is an interesting kind of overlap in Bangladesh where uh, many uh, urban uh, uh, municipalities would actually have uh, characteristics of rural life and livelihoods because they are still underdeveloped and uh, our, our uh, people are dependent on uh, agricultural agriculture and uh, related activities for their livelihood. This picture shows, uh, I, I will speak about uh, a livelihood development pro program. Uh, this picture shows that during the flood, a man carrying this uh, uh, small cow because uh, this is the source of livelihood after the uh, uh, the only asset probably this man has, and after the flood, if he has to uh, uh, regain uh, its livelihood, then probably this uh, as, uh, asset will help him uh, stand back on his feet. Next, we have the similar picture where we see uh, uh, how people have, uh, you know, sheltered um, a horse which is also a source of livelihood for the poorer people. Next. Okay. Now, one of the projects uh, that, uh, that aimed at uh, uh, building assets for the poorer people so that they can more sustainably uh, uh, overcome their poverty and vulnerability from the floods. So one of the major main uh, in, uh, intervention was raising their homestead pins above the flood level, above the highest flood level, so that during the time of uh, flooding, they can at least shelter their uh, assets, uh, their livelihood, uh, their you know the homestead uh, domestic animals, and and uh, and uh, and also even have some homestead uh, horticultural plants. So raising homestead plant plinth required some uh, substantial uh, cost, uh, but uh, community groups voluntarily contributed their time. Of course, they are partly paid also because they needed to be paid for their, uh, 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 for their livelihood. And uh, these people were also given training on agricultural and uh, different technologies, like the different technology options to earn an income. Women were also given awareness raising training so that they can also uh, 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 they can also they can also also be resilient and assert themselves. Next, the results that uh, we found from there was that. Uh, it, it brought back the household food security because, you know, uh, people were undertaking income earning activities through agriculture production and marketing of their goods. And it helped uh, reducing uh, the, the insecurity, food related insecurity. It discouraged urban migration. People often tend to flock out into the uh, urban centers when there's no uh, uh, income and uh, situation is very dire in the uh, rural areas. And uh, uh, these programs also encourage uh, people to innovate technologies, technical solution, different technological solution. Uh, for example, uh, different national institutions, uh, scientific institutions basically, uh, developed uh, flood resistant uh, crops and uh, also water purification techn technologies in the coastal areas to supply safe drinking water. Uh, uh, similarly for women, awareness raising have, and have helped them build their le leadership capacity and uh, stop violence against women. Uh, 
the food based capacity building support is similar uh, food based capacity building which is also livelihood which resulted into uh, extreme poor families surviving during the disaster situation and uh, and address their uh, hunger and mal malnutrition program uh, ngo they were also linked with microfinancial institutions who provided them with finances investment uh, finances for undertaking uh, different small scale enterprises uh, and and provided the ngo mfis provided different other social services like women and children's um, health now this one is the early warning system is a still uh, is is an important component uh, right from uh, the mega disaster that uh, dr uh, 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 Dr. Raja Benson in 1971, when we had a, 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 a super cyclone and which had claimed about half a million of people, uh, from there down to uh, current uh, time, uh, the mortality, the fatality rates have uh, dramatically come down. So disaster early warning system plays as an uh, important role in, in, in that. So government agencies like Meteorological Department and uh, the, the uh, Disaster Management uh, Ministry and its uh, uh, departments work together with the local communities <laughs> and NGOs to complement each other, to disseminate uh, early warning information and how to uh, organize community groups to respond to emergencies. Uh, the so uh, for that purpose, the uh, there are disaster management committees formed at ward and community level, and uh, people are made aware about disaster risk and how to address those uh, through 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 uh, attending meetings and training sessions. And there are volunteer groups formed to help people evacuate to safer places and make emergency and humanitarian responses. Yeah, this is a uh, two pictures showing uh, the Bangladesh Red Crescent Society volunteers wearing helmet and jacket. You know, they are uh, helping, uh, informing people about the uh, impending uh, cyclone and also uh, trying to evacuate people from the coastal areas. Next. Uh, this is a... Uh, uh, a picture of a multi-purpose cyclone shelter. Uh, these shelters are used, cyclone and flood shelter, actually, they are used uh, during the time of uh, cyclone that people can come here with their, uh, even with their uh, livestock animals and children, women, everyone can take shelter. And uh, uh, when the disaster is over, then this uh, uh, centers are used for different purposes like health center, uh, primary education, school, uh, and the like, yeah, community center, etc. Uh, the results of this intervention increase awareness among the people about disaster risk and improved communication. I mean, the lack of communication was one of the uh, uh, causes which had uh, previously caused uh, huge disasters because in isolated uh, coastal areas, people were not informed about, uh, properly informed about the impending disaster. So this, uh, uh, this, uh, so this multi-purpose center, as I said, and BDRC is that the volunteer, Bangladesh Red Crescent Society has, now has about 70,000 volunteers all over the country, which is said to be one of the largest in the world. Uh, lessons from Bangladesh experience is that Resilient building against uh, flood is basically not undertaking mega infra, uh, physical infrastructure building, but about managing and coping uh, the flood problems. Uh, we complain about nature being cruel to us, but you know disasters are often caused by. Uh, we have to recognize that by man-made actions, for example, deforestation and uh, inappropriate water control uh, measures. Flood al along the transboundary, the other countries also have similar problems that, uh, yeah, urban flooding is mostly caused by 
you know, human breeze, uh, encroachment of lands and filling up of the canals and, uh, and uh, waterways. These are some of the uh, mindless activities of uh, human beings which cause flooding and that they need to be uh, stopped and emphasized. Uh, that uh, poor people do not have to pay for the for the for the mistakes or for the you know for the mindless uh, 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 activities that uh, other people do. Uh, management and use of surface water need to be increased uh, because uh, uh, the, when water shortage we suffer from water shortage, our ma uh, management of surface water uh, can actually uh, have uh, uh, could could help alleviate the situation. Technological and social innovations have created wonders in Bangladesh and we just uh, gave a couple of examples and it needs to be uh, practiced. Uh, we need increased focus on nature-based solutions even when we introduce infrastructure development projects, we uh, make it a conditional so that people also uh, uh, attached to it is a nature-based solution. Thank you very much.